The hugs fit. How are you? I'm good. Hey. What's up? Hey, what's up? Wow. What's up? Oh, so already. Like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> already neglecting her by oh. not even standing up oh. to hug your wife. Oh, oh man. Oh, the the jump forward in the system. Oh, <laughs> God. By the way, by the way, oh. just so you know, just so you're aware. Okay. This this is all this is all part of the show. So you're the show's happening right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Okay, I don't We're know. I don't know rolling. if you know. We're <laughs> always you know, you know, watch the well, podcast. I walked in, everyone's like, I was like, oh, they're like starting. Oh, well, no, we, we weren't. We were talking uh, about schedule and stuff. Uh, That's okay. not going in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <I hope. laughs> you never know when I start the podcast. I'll probably start when Charlie was playing this morning when I walked in. Cool shirt, Jill. Thanks, Glenn. Pink Floyd. Now, between the two of you, the amount of band shirts that you own. Oh, yeah. Now, do you guys, do you buy them off people on the side of the highway? Um, or yeah. do you, yeah. is it online? <laughs> it's not hard to find band shirts. Uh, yeah, that's be true. Next to be to the fair, I think or... this might be my only band shirt. Right? No, you've got, you've oh, got that Bowie, Bowie shirt. Oh, I have a Bowie one. Okay, I have two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Have do two. you have as Which... many opinions on t-shirts as Glenn does and the oh. arms and oh. how long the arms? as many like... opinions? <laughs> I don't have as many opinions as Glenn in general. Yeah, oh, okay. that, that would be <laughs> a very, quite a feat. An opinionated man. Any household can only have so many opinions, and I imagine you gobble up most. Is this true? <laughs> Gobble. Oh, wow. I gobble up most of the opinion time. Let's give our, our listeners and uh, our creeps a, a proper introduction of Jill. Um, uh, should we talk about your char- your character first? Uh, the fact that you're married? Where do we begin? Where do we I start? Think, well, I, first of all, I just want to say, I think it's like, I mean, you know, the creeps and the listeners, they, they've <laughs> seen a lot of Mary Elizabeth and and... Caitlin mm-hmm. uh, as actors, but also they've seen them on the podcast. Mm-hmm. They they have some idea of how we interact mm-hmm. with Caitlin and Mary Elizabeth. I don't think anybody really has any idea how we interact with Jill Latiano Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yes, this is going to be I'm more you know, of, sort of a mystery. I'm yes. the mystery you are. wife. But you I are. will say Glenn has brought you up a lot in the most glowing and loving terms. So the rest of it we cut out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. We don't ever thank edit you. it into yeah, the yeah, episode. Glenn, that's going to ruin your marriage. We got to get that out. Um, but we're also talking about the dentist system. Yeah, we're yep. very happy to have you join us for this episode, the dentist system, which is a yep. fan favorite. Yes. And you play such a crucial part in it. Yeah, it's funny. We laugh all the time because. We cannot post a photo of ourselves without all of the comments or 99% oh, of the comments yeah. being like, oh, the dentist system works. Dentist really works. Oh, you forgot, <laughs> to, do- forgot to separate entirely. You forgot to separate entirely. It's like, hey, guys, okay, so if any of you are the ones that making that com- the, making those comments, any creeps and listeners that are listening right now, it, I, I get it. I totally get, we get it. We get, <laughs> we get it. We get it. I understand why you're doing it. But stop. <laughs> but only, but not because, not because we're offended by it or anything like that. Just stop because it's like getting old. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like we get it. We, we get it. Yeah, you we you get did it. it. You can't make the same joke. Over <laughs> and do they and not over see over. how many other people are making the same joke? I, you know? I get a lot of that. A not. lot of like, oh, look, I guess uh, the waitress is uh, letting you hang around this right. week or whatever. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. You get that. I don't know. I guess it's nostalgic. nostalgic Separate for them. entirely from but... our characters, please. Let us be real human beings. Yes. We're I mean, it's been, people. yeah. Gosh. Just go back to commenting on Glenn's bleary red eyes. <laughs> yeah, how he looks high in well. every picture. Yeah. Yeah. How he looks stoned in every picture. Okay, yeah. so it was season five. Oh, yes. Okay, it so thanks, Charlie. Take us back. We have a bit of structure. Take us back. Yes. Let's Megan give out. us some structure. Uh, the Dentist System is season five, episode 10. It aired on November 19th, 2009. And I've written down here that I believe you two were married on September 8th, 2009. So this was yeah. shot before or after you got married? It was shot before remember? we got married, but then aired, aired after. after. And we got married on September 5th. I don't know where oh, that date Oh, sorry. Comes from. The internet. It's Wikipedia. And they Stupid messed internet. It up. Wikipedia <laughs> just doesn't. September 5th. September 5th. Um, so you weren't married yet. 
in this. No, we were so engaged. It could have gone we're wrong. Engaged. It could have been like I still could have gotten out. Yeah, you, you, had, <laughs> you, you had, had a, a chance, window you guys? there to be like, you know, I worked with you on set, and it just I see now, <laughs> I um, see now the man that you really are, and I and I don't think I like it. <laughs> now we had Martin Roselle on the podcast, and we were talking about the dentist system, which was they penned that. They one. wrote it with David Hornsby. With Hornsby, yeah. mm-hmm. uh-huh. and it was directed by Randall Einhorn. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, who we'll have on at some point? Um. Now, re- recollections of uh, things. <laughs> uh, Your specialty. You can't remember the My words for that. My specialty. can't remember the words <laughs> for how to remember things. Uh, were you, do you remember reading the script for the first time? Or, or did Glenn kind of pitch it to you? And I say, feel hey. like Glenn probably pitched it to me. I don't remember. I, I don't remember reading it for the first time. I don't. If I'm being honest, is yet. Jill close enough to the mic, guys? Yeah, yeah. I believe so. I'd be told. Uh, yeah, test. Be to oh, oh, oh okay. testing, yeah, testing. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. Rob likes to suck on it and have it fully in his mouth. <laughs> this one. Uh, all of them. All <laughs> he's, been, he's, he's, he's had his mouth yeah, on the mic. He's is torn that, through is all that the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> we have to change them out, though, so that's probably clean. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Is that better? Yep, okay. all good. Um, where were we? Uh, no, I don't remember reading the script for the first time. Mm. I don't. I remember, like, my general <laughs> recollection. <That's very> unmemorable. <laughs> well, I just remember thinking it's hilarious and insane and, you know, and it, that it was going to be super fun to work together. Well, we caught, and we caught Jill at a time where she was still acting. Yes. Jill is no longer... No, acting retired she retired mm-hmm. from producing uh, quite a bit though yes producing a lot of great documentaries yes. and Thank films you. yeah the episode i mean glenn and i watched it last night <laughs> i was just like oh my god this is so fucked up have yeah. you had you not watched it since it aired Did i don't you? think so no <laughs> maybe like maybe i caught it once or twice i don't know but not like fully sat down to watch it you uh-huh. know i don't know i don't love watching myself I don't know. Some people are like that. It's kind of weird, and so I think I think most people yeah. don't. There's an uncomfortable yeah. factor there. Yeah. But when we watched it, I was just like, "Oh my god!" Well, she first of all, she was like, hey, "We look so young." I did. That was the first thing I said. I was like, I "Look know. how cute it's and young we were." Go well, back I feel and watch like, those and be like did like, you also put like a dreamy filter on the sort of flashback? It felt like when you did the moments, there was like a little bit of like a yeah, a little bit of a thing. I'm sure. Thing on yeah. it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But. It was fun. You look awful young sitting here in front of me now, so. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been about 14 years, I think. Uh, it has been 14 years. Yeah. Has it yeah, been almost 14 exactly. years yeah. since we did that episode? Almost exactly 14 oh, years yeah. since we Isn't shot it. Isn't that crazy? It. Yeah. That's depressing. Yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, yeah. it, it's funny, but it's just so crazy. I And I it made me remember that at that time, like when I was, when we were just dating before we were married and people, you know, and the show was still young at that point and, and. They'd say, oh, what does your boyfriend do? And I'm like, oh, he's an actor. Oh, is he on anything I would know? I don't know. Do you know the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which one is he? And I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm like, he's, I feel like I, I'm like, he's the, the uh, psychopath, uh, vain asshole. Yeah. But I, and I'd be, I swear he's not like that in real life, you know, because he does it so well that I felt like I'd have to explain. Like, I promise you he's just a really good actor. That's not who he is. But there have to be people out there that wonder why such a wonderful person as yourself <laughs> be married to such a horrible man. <laughs> not not being able to fully separate themselves from my character or no, separate I, out yeah. the fact that I could be I could be a different person, you know, or or that 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 I could present in public as a different person than my, than my character, but there's got to be down, deep right. down like is he the guy, you know what I mean? But like I don't I mean, we we couldn't have been together for that long if I was anywhere, anything no. resembling. Unless the system is so strong. <laughs> yeah. You're the incapable mask is so of leaving. Like, I'm like, yeah. yeah imagine know. the brain power it takes on my part to keep the system going well, for, for that, that long. long. That's what I've always thought about like self-help books when it comes to dating is that a lot of them I feel like, especially geared towards women, give you a sort of... Like, I remember I once got this one called Why Men Love Bitches. And it was all, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I, got, in the back. I heard some cackles. Wow. wow. Um, but it was all about how you need to, like, treat him badly at the beginning so that he'll, like, chase you. Oh, my God. And, but my thought is always, okay, so let's say that this system is, like, effective. At what point do you rip off the mask and go, actually, it's me. I'm really clingy and dependent. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
Yeah. Why do you do that? I don't do know. The mouth just deteriorates. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't right. have to rip slowly. it off. It just oh, slowly just slowly crumbles it's away. It's like those stitches you get that dissolve into the skin. Yes, you don't have yes, to go yes, get yes, those. Yes, okay, yes. all right. Yeah, so maybe that was what so happened. It dissolved Maybe. so slowly that you didn't, that I didn't imperceptibly, you didn't notice. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, by that time, it was too late. I, I don't really remember that episode getting pitched. I guess we were talking about those books, those systems for picking up women. Yeah, I have a memory of writing out the, uh, us writing out the dentist system uh, on the board in the offices where we were writing season four. Yes, I feel like I rem I can remember the letters on the board and trying to come up with. I remember being in that acronym. space that we were in in season four when when that acronym when it, when we first came up with the acronym and what it all meant. Mm. But I don't remember why we weren't able to complete the episode. Well, maybe we just didn't have a story that. for it yet, right? Like yeah, we, we, yeah, we knew, okay, this is a funny concept. Sometimes that's how it goes. Uh, we, we, didn't, were, we didn't have the right actress for you to dentist. <laughs> yes, we, had, we didn't know who we were writing to. You guys weren't even engaged. You were simply <laughs> dating. We didn't know if it was going to last. We were engaged. We, got, we were engaged for a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. What was the hesitation? <laughs> there was no hesitation. There wasn't. You know what it was? It was Caitlin and Rob were getting married that year, uh -huh. like, and with four other friends of ours we had, getting like, married. So many other friends getting married. So that we're year. like, so we we're gotta like, wait till the next year. Mm -hmm. the next and then year, I liked wanna... the weather in September, and so we're like, mm -hmm. we're gonna wait. We didn't want to. We knew our. We knew our wedding was gonna be absolutely amazing. We just didn't want to. You know, it was a good time. <laughs> Don't want to step on your It was a good phase. It was a, it, was a, yeah. it was a good time. It was a good time for me because I would really cut loose at those weddings, you know, <laughs> and just let it rip. Yeah. And I miss that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a good that. one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I do remember us coming. And then I guess we finally came up with the, what the whole story was uh, when we were breaking season five, which was at Fox. Because season four, oh, we, were, I, we were in Culver City. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. My whole visual image of the writing of that episode is is in the Culver City offices. So interesting, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, it's exactly. Over. Okay, so you do, so you do remember yes. it in the Culver City offices. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it funny how like that's how I remember things by the space we were in. Totally. No, I mean, that makes I mean sense. it totally makes sense. Yeah. 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 Which is why like 5 through 10 are such a blur cuz we were in that those Fox offices forever. Yeah, 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 it does that does become a little bit of a blur. Five less so because it was our first year mm -hmm. there. So like this season in particular, like really sticks in my memory because it was the first year we were at on the Fox lot. And I remember and, and who pooped the bed? That that's from this season, right? No, that was that? four. Last oh, that was four. That was four. Oh, that's so weird because my memory of you writing all that stuff out on the board. That's in those was, was Culver in, City offices. That was in the Culver yeah. City offices. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, anyway, back to you, Jill. What else? <laughs> what else? Uh, when did you guys meet how did this happen i remember you hanging cute. around the venice house that yes. rob and glenn lived at yes and every now and then they would have a party and i remember you were in the mix that's where we met wait was charlie that at that party i think he was i think he might have been well i don't know because i didn't know you yet that's why it's not that you're not memorable. It's just that uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe you, you remember someone else. Remember there was a lot of people there. Well, the gravity of Glenn was so strong that mm -hmm. you you only had okay. eyes for him. Plus, yeah. I was taken, so I wasn't yeah. giving off that vibe. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, we had a mutual friend. We have a mutual friend, Yada Martinez, mm -hmm. um, who Glenn went to college with, and who I became like quick qu friends with when I moved to LA. And she brought me to their house party. I don't know if you want to say the beginnings of that. Glenn kind of asked, you want to tell your part? Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been single at that point and uh, for, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three years or something like that. And uh, Yana and I were good friends. And I was like, hey, you, know, you got, any, got any cute friends you want to invite over? <laughs> like, anybody you think I would like? Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. we knew each other pretty well. And she knew, I guess, what, maybe what I, what, what I was into as far as like what I was looking for. <laughs> Um, and, uh, she was like, you know, it's funny you bring that up. There is this one person. And then she described to me the per, and she was, and I was like, oh, tell me and what's her name. I did Our, not sound good on paper. Her name's Jill. And, and to me, well, well uh, in sorry, some ways you I sounded sound, amazing on they paper. They sound, yeah. But, but then in other ways, I was like, like Ugh. <laughs> I she was like, she you'll was like, get it when he says it. She was it. like, her name's, her name's Jill. Strike one. <laughs> Strike one. I Who hate has the name Jill. <laughs> uh, well, my name's Glenn and Jill. I, she needs to have a cooler name, you know, so that <laughs> Carry can, the to, to balance the, the Glenn <laughs> of it all. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, and, and she was like, she was like, she's a, she's, she just moved here from New York. Um, she's a model. Uh, she's a dancer. 
you know, and now she's acting as well. You know, you know what I mean? Oh. And I was like, and I was like, three like, things. I was like a model <laughs> and a threat. dancer. I'm like, okay, so she's mm-hmm. she's probably <laughs> attract physically attractive, <laughs> right, but right, like, right. is she gonna be? Does she DJ vapid? too? Uh, yeah, well, she did actually. She did DJ. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> right, that was go. a small stint. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, on paper, I get how kind of like douchey I could have sounded, or, or well, I was just, I was just like, <sighs> or there's yeah, preconceived notions mm, of yeah. girls that Fair. you know. Are in but those that, businesses sometimes. But mm-hmm. I knew that because you were friends with Yada and yeah, how much I liked Yada and I trusted Yada's taste in human beings. I yes. was like, okay, well, she, she must be pretty, pretty decent. Now, did and you, that, wait, sorry, did you get Glenn's breakdown? Were you also aware yes. that this setup was happening? Yes, and, yes, and yes, how yes. was he pitched to you? He was pitched <laughs> to me. <Yeah. laughs> he was Let's pitched to me. Pitch. You know what happened is I think we were in the car with another friend and they were talking about the show, and it was only season two, so I hadn't heard of the show yet. Okay. And Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It had only been I don't even know if season seasons. two had aired. Maybe it had. Uh, it had. Okay, it but had. still Just. very early. Uh-huh. And and they're talking about the show and talking about the guys on the show. And then they were talking about Glenn, like, oh, he's cute. And this, and I was like, what is the show? Who is this person? You know? Mm-hmm. And I unlike Glenn, had just got out of, like, a five-year relationship. So I was kind of, like, ready to have fun and Mm -hmm. not looking for something super serious. But also, I was single. I just moved to L.A., you know. So um, she told me about him. I probably looked him up, you know, and I'm like, okay, all right. Let's meet this guy. <laughs> yeah, so on paper, I might not have looked that good either then. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, no, you looked good. You looked like a successful, like, successful actor, right. hand, handsome guy. He was renting guy. a pretty big house. He was a, it was a three-story well, no, House no, no, in, no, no, in no, no, you're, you're missing two stories. It was, it was, no, no. <laughs> One story, was, but you had a big room. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big room. It was an apartment, but it was a big apartment. And it was on the top floor of like a very, of like a two story building or whatever, or three story building. Yeah. So you and Rob had the top floor of that, of that. We building. had, yeah. And yeah. jacuzzi on the roof. Yeah. With the jacuzzi on the roof. Uh-huh. It was pretty oh, bachelor patty. Uh-huh. It was very Yeah, you got taken patty. back to that apartment with a yeah. jacuzzi on the roof and yes. you were like, uh-huh. well, you were, I guess you were in the place you're like, well, this isn't going to be a long term yeah. thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Party also, like, I'll hang out with party at board. that yeah. age, like, jacuzzi on the roof is not a red flag. Sure, at that sure, age, jacuzzi is like, you can afford a jacuzzi. You know, like, like, wow, how do you what? pay for the water? How'd you get it on the yeah. roof? How'd you yeah, yeah, get, yeah. On the roof? get it on the roof? By they the way, craned it on the I, roof. We craned it onto the roof, if, if anyone's interested. Yeah, <laughs> if you're interested on how to we do that. We literally had to get a crane. You got, you were like Mac and Dennis craning a hot tub onto a roof? <laughs> <laughs> we, first of all, first of all, picture Rob and I hot tub shopping, oh, which we did. That, that was the first amazing. step. The first step was going to the hot tub place on Sepulveda, and 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 that looking and looking at various models and, and discussing you know, the pros and cons of the different you, shapes and yes, colors. Exactly. And yes, exactly. Who's gonna yes. sit where? And uh, Glenn, let's um, go pack right now. If we have a quick midlife crisis, let's get an apartment <laughs> and with a jacuzzi on the roof. Be a, be a lot sadder now. Be a lot um, sadder. <laughs> <laughs> Three of you guys in an apartment with a jacuzzi. We'd on be room. going in to to soak the things that hurt. You know, that's right. It would a whole just different be motivation for being on that roof. Yeah. Yeah. God, just everything hurts. Everything hurts. Want to get up in the tub, bro? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's Rob's do it. in an ice bath. <laughs> <laughs> totally. You'd have to have an ice bath. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. fill the jacuzzi with ice. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so we met at the house party. You yep. met at the house party, and, and you got past the whole jacuzzi on the roof thing. Got past that. We talked about lots of interesting things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had some. We had. We had well, some we bonded over the fact that Glenn had two cats. I don't mm-hmm. know if everyone knows this. When we met, he had two cats. I grew up with cats. I liked cats, and but you I had think zero cats at the time. I had met. zero cats oh, okay. as a single woman in my mid twenties. <laughs> Good for you. But <laughs> I, I did. I think what what we first started talking was I heard him. The cats. One of the cats' names was Bean. And my nickname, my friends called me Bean, like Jilly Bean, like and Bean for short. So he's like, Bean, Bean, you know? And I'm like, what? And then I see he's talking to the cat. And I was, and I think I said, like, I thought you were talking to me because my friends called me Jilly Bean or Bean. Yeah. And then we started talking and he's like, oh, I have another cat. He had another cat in the other room. He showed me his other cat. Okay. So he demonstrated about his value with his cat cats. and his rooftop jacuzzi. Yes. Yes. Okay. Showed, showed her that I was in touch with my feminine side. By uh, cats. Yes. Right, yes. So that's by the way, I think he rented balance. those cats and then he was stuck into keeping them because <laughs> it right, worked. Right, right. You know. No. The no, funny thing is, like, like on the surface, very, like, maybe to be considered like not that cool to be like a single dude with with two cats. You know what I mean? But the way, but I, to, in, to my mind, and by the way, I was like, I wasn't single when I, I got the cats with an ex girlfriend, and then we broke up, and I kept the cats, and she left. Um, <laughs> 
But so, so I ended up a single guy with two cats. But I, I decided at a certain point, I was like, I'm going to own this. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to fully, fully own this and, and, and embrace the fact that, that I'm a single dude with two cats. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think uh, you're it, demonstrating it your value. Me. You're demonstrating your feminine side yes. yeah. <laughs> with your masculine side. It's, yeah. it's a good move. So, okay, what's the next step? E, engage physically? Yeah. Uh, that didn't well, happen yes. for a while. That engage. didn't happen right no. away? That didn't happen no, that No, he night? did not. Very Let's be young. clear, he did not dentist system me, okay, everybody? <laughs> that was not real. Well, he, may, he may have. He so must. let's try to break this down. Are we going to discover this and then I'm going to... Yeah, we well, might let's discover see. Let's see. Let's find out. Um, so I did no. demonstrate my value, though, that first night with my hot well, tub and my But in the episode, apartment. Dennis doesn't even take Kaylee on a date. No, So straight. you dated, right. at least. We dated. You had some dates. We went on a f- first date. We yeah. got the, sushi. The D may stand for date. So you <laughs> oh. dated. Something very shady happened on our on our first date. Um, oh, the we, money. We thing? we were talking oh. on the phone. Okay. And, I have uh, no money. We had <laughs> <two> money. <laughs> I've been a lot of jacuzzi debt. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, pay for this sushi, but no. Um, I think what happened is I told when we met and you asked me out and I said, oh, I'm going to Vegas that the next weekend for a friend's bachelorette party. Yeah, let's and, hang out when I get so back. let's hang out when I get back. And he says, I said, when I said, I said, all right, I tell you what, when you get to Vegas, first thing you're going to do is walk in the casino and put a hundred dollars on black. Right. And if it pays, I'll take a hundred and you take, you take a hundred. Uh-huh. Right. But if, if you lose, I'll pay you back the hundred dollars. Right, yeah, I, was like, I was like, so so you're like, you're at no, so I was like, so you're at okay. no yeah. risk here, I like it. you know, um, and that and she lost, <laughs> and so on our first date, the first thing I did, so we, I walk up at the sushi restaurant, he's at the booth, and he hands me a hundred dollars, <laughs> looks real good, yeah, and, and, looks real good, and, <laughs> and, and then we're the laughing about it, like, that, I mean, that probably I didn't think, look good, yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah, sitting yeah. down until yeah. you pay me, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, meanwhile, I was Thanks thinking like- Thanks for the night, babe. Here's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, that looks real bad. Can I get a V? Can I get a U? Can I get a O R I? That's right. It's a Viore. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, back to sponsor the pod. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love my Vioris. Yeah, we love it. Viori is a new perspective on performance apparel. All of their core shorts, Sunday joggers, and activewear are designed to work out in, but don't look or feel like it. Wait, 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 wait. Does that mean that they don't look or feel like workout clothes? Because uh, I do want my workout clothes to feel like workout clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah, but what Meg is, I think, actually saying is that you don't normally want to wear your gym clothes out casually because maybe, yeah, well, they aren't that comfortable or fitted, right? Could Mm. be the reason. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Viore's products are great for running and training and overpriced midday yoga classes, for instance, and even swimming. But they're also great for just lounging around and running errands. And I don't have to get my uh, workout shorts uh, tailored anymore. <laughs> You're getting your workout shorts tailored? <laughs> so Viore is here to make it work uh, when your workout hasn't even begun to peak. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they're offering 20% off your first purchase. So go get yourself some of the most comfortable Comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash sunny pod. That's V U O R I.com slash sunny pod. And not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but you will enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. That's a biggie. So go to viori.com slash sunny pod and discover the versatility of Viori clothing. When do you bring Glenn Howerton to San Diego to meet your parents? Or your parents come up to meet and meet him? And no. no. Dinner, like, how? It was my sister's birthday, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Jamie's birthday. Yeah, my sister was living in Orange County at the time, and she had a big birthday. It might have been her, I don't know, how old were we? Uh, I mean, it Maybe it was her 30th. her 30th. Yeah, yeah, her 30th. And I brought him to that. And what did they think? Had they seen the show? Were they like, no. okay. I don't think they'd seen the show. Her dad, okay, so her sense of humor comes from her dad. Yeah. All right. So, Bob Laziano. So I, I just, I, okay, so I go to this thing and I go to this this, this party, which is basically just a, a family party yeah, with me. Like a handful there. of my sister's friends and like a family. Yeah, yeah that was it. Um, uh, but like I got along with all of them instantly, um, especially her dad, who he and I just are like, 
we were so we had the same sense of humor where the like we just got along like super super well and um we were at the bar we were gonna get like a beer or something like that and i was like hey you want to do a tequila shot (laughs) to her dad yeah 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 and he was like yeah let's do it you know so we did a tequila (laughs) shot and then and then and then like maybe 15 minutes after that he busted out the karaoke machine it was like, we're going to do karaoke. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. This family gets crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. This family gets crazy. Okay, so a couple of people got up, did some karaoke. I'm sitting next to her dad on the couch. Okay, this is a true story. <sighs> yeah. I'm sitting next to her dad on the couch. And his song came up. His turn came up, right? The song started. He was like, oh, and he's like, and he turns to me and he's like, oh, it's, it's, it's my turn. I'm going to go. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, go, go, go. And he literally gets up, and as he's getting up, he farts on me, <laughs> audibly, like super loud, and totally on purpose. What? Like, like it wasn't, it didn't squeak over? out. No, just so, as he's lifting. He was like, <laughs> like that, just like fully wow. farts on me. <sighs> oh my God, you guys. And I was like, that is the funniest <laughs> fucking thing that, like, I just met this guy. It's so wow! And he just it's territorial in a way. Yes. This is the father yeah. I was this raised by. This is yeah. the man who raised okay. her. Yeah, like, and he would do things like that. He would well, just. Well, he was yeah, a like, car was salesman, salesman, right? Yeah, and he was like the life of the party. He's a great athlete. Yeah. He's an awesome golfer. We would often talk golf. It was amazing. Yeah, and uh, and you you got the sense that had his life taken him that direction, he would have loved to have been a performer. Totally. Right. Like he yeah, super charismatic. Yeah. Like walked in a room and just like radiated. You know, and yeah, you're like, just oh, yeah. like a loved. big kind of yeah. Sean Connery kind of yes, en- energy. Yes. You know. Um, yeah. But yeah, that and, was his sense of humor. But then, like, interesting to get farted on, like intentionally. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I don't know how I would have. T- I like it. I, like, uh, it is it was a power hilarious. move? <laughs> yeah, it seems you know, like a power is it, move. Is he nagging you? Remember, you're beneath me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, remember. Don't forget. You. Don't forget. I might be having fun with you and doing shots, but don't mm-hmm. forget your place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I no. I'm I the think he just had. Farty. He was like a. He was like a frat boy trapped in an adult man's body. You know, like he was yeah, just, yeah. He, that was his sense of humor. I mean, he did that to me in high school. I told, I told our son Miles this story recently because whatever, but I, I, he, one time the phone rang. Oh, I was telling Miles how like back in the day when you called someone's house, like you had to like talk to their parents and be like, hey, can I talk yeah, to someone's house? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's like, that's awkward. I'm like, yeah, well, want to <laughs> yes. hear it awkward? My dad mm-hmm. answered the phone once. He's like, hello. And the person was like, is Jill there? And he's like, yeah, hold on a second. And put the phone to his ass and farted in it. And it was my boyfriend. <laughs> wow. It was my like, high school wow. boyfriend. So this was like a move he did. I guess he yeah, thought it was hilarious scary. to make these. Yeah, so hey, when look, you brought If I find home, these guys yeah. and they stick around, there's a good man. Yeah. But if they think this is funny, then they're keeper i don't know okay, well yeah. so, so if but, they're offended by my casual flatulence <laughs> uh, you know they're not gonna make it if i can blast ass all over this guy <laughs> he's cool <laughs> but the, 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 anyway the, the, but the thing is is like you know how there's some people who can get away with certain jokes and there are other people who can't yeah. like if you don't know bob laziano you don't, you don't, you you don't know if he's the kind of person who can get away with something like that. Who, mm-hmm. uh, coming from another person, it would have been just disgusting, disrespectful, strange, and awkward. Mm-hmm. But coming from him, just, I mean, I just knew, I felt like I knew him almost instantly. He just had that yeah. personality. You just like, and and he could just, he was the type of person who could get away with something like yeah. that, and it was genuinely funny. I think there's a thing too with. <sighs> Men who've had raised two daughters, mm-hmm. right? Who suddenly, you know, there's this man in in the life to be like, eh, like it's kind of like enjoying the guy energy of it. Yeah, I have this a little bit with you know uh, Mary Elizabeth's father, where I think they like, you know, they didn't have a son, but they and like, he didn't have a brother. He was an only child, right? you know. There you go. And he's like a sports guy. He just like he was like, very sporty yeah, and jocular. And, yes, yeah. exactly. And I think he he just enjoyed that sense of humor, and he was silly, but. When things like that happen, you suddenly have permission to just be fully yourself mm-hmm. in a weird way. Yeah. You're like, oh, this, okay, you can let it all hang out with these people. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a good feeling to feel like it you is. can be your authentic self and that you're not going to be misunderstood. You can you can let your full sense of humor, your f- you can let your freak flag fly. Mm-hmm. You can find your inner mantis toboggan. You can find your inner <laughs> toboggan and, and just and just kind of really go for it. I mean, that's inside. a let's, let's that's talk a cool about thing. that a little now, bit. Let's, let's talk about, yeah. about yeah. Dr. Yeah. Mantis yeah. toboggan, um, which is such a big part mm. of what that was so without funny. a doubt, Rob Martyr and Roselle uh, name. 
There was something about the name Mantis that I remember Rose, Roselle, I think, was had latched onto that as as a word. So did you and, think of the full the full name Mantis Toboggan and then you went back and inserted it into the dialogue? Because because Max says he you should see him feast. He's like a mantis. Right. <laughs> and then he's like, Mantis, and then he, I he like likes that. that. And so then he takes that as the name. So I wondered if it, if that was done organically in the script writing. Or if it was thought of at the end, like, we want him to be this guy named Mantis Toboggan, so oh, man. you can't remember. I wish I could remember that. <laughs> I think it was, I think the name came first, honestly. Yeah. And then I think Such it was a, a way to one. organically have him, you know, realize the name. Although it occurred to me, I was like, so he's been signing scripts just as Dr. Toboggan, yeah. and he, he hadn't created a first name for his doctor character yet <laughs> until that moment. Yeah. And in that moment, he realized, like, that's the first name I've been searching right. for. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because he's already really, been signing scripts It was a different me. episode right. where he does the video. Because I remember pitching yes, to him. The viral like, video. Hey, well, Danny, will you say Dr. Toboggan and then remember your first name's Mantis? <laughs> Mantis. Yeah. And, and he did it in such a funny way. Take it from me. I am a doctor. Dr. Toboggan. Mantis Toboggan. <laughs> But that uh, Mantis discussion is very close to my favorite line of the episode, which is Danny saying, I got my Magnum condoms. I got my wad of hundreds. I'm ready to plow. Yeah. <laughs> ready to plow. <laughs> I'm not realizing <laughs> till this moment right now that I forgot to rewatch the episode. Oh, you did? I forgot. Oh, you forgot to watch it. I forgot. Just it skipped oh. my mind, but I'm excited because now I get to I get to go back and watch well, it. Yeah. I completely forgot about your storyline. About uh, what is to, it? What is my storyline? You're trying about? to Dennis the waitress. Yeah. Oh, and I yeah, go over and I mess her plumbing up. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and a you've bag got a bag of hair. Of hair. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. Ziploc bag of hair. And then That's you right. show up at her job at the carnival or the fair at the end. Yeah. You know, and you to wanted to the get the carny to stab to do the speed her. Speed pitch. Oh, but, yeah. Yes, and then you pay a carny to stab her, but That's that right. carny stabs That guy was great. <laughs> that guy was so good to play the carny. We had him on a pilot that we made for Bill Burr. Yeah, Brad Carter. Yeah. Yeah. Also an amazing musician. He's a good actor. There's a great, there's a really crazy video of him getting like very serious brain surgery while he's playing the guitar. What? Yes. They do that to make sure they're not going near. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, they'll have people right. play like the violin. They're taking it around to see if they can, you know, trigger any new skills. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, That'd yeah. be cool. If this guy yeah, handing him new instruments. If constantly. this guy starts speaking Portuguese, you know, right? Yeah, this we're doing something yeah. right. Well, um, I love this episode actually because you think it's going to be a very Dennis centric episode, and it kind of is. But what I like about it is like your major want for the episode is that you want to be understood by the gang that your system works. You don't even he's not, his want his character's want isn't even to get the girl. No. He he doesn't no, care about prove. that at all. It's yeah. to it's prove, prove that, that the works. system works for yeah. the rest works. of you. And then the the it just has a great sunny um, uh, structure of that sending you all off into these like little storylines, yeah. which are really fun to watch with like, you know, Frank and his Mantis Toboggan and Mac trying to move, move in, in after, after Caitlin getting all paranoid that her boyfriend is yes. dennising her. Yes, dennising her. Ben, ben, ben the Soldier. Ben the Soldier. Yeah, yeah, I like Turtles. We convince, yes. Yes. we convince her that Ben the Soldier is dennising her. And he's right. sitting in that hot car. Yeah. Yeah, Which yeah, is yeah. so oh, sweet. Yeah. You're probably getting Dennis right now by that new boyfriend of yours, and you don't even know. Yeah. What boyfriend? <laughs> she don't have a boyfriend. Yes, I do. <laughs> ben, you know, the online soldier that I met. I, we're what? back together now. What? Does not that dude want to date you after what you put him through? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he Dennis you, but he wouldn't date you. He's not Dennising me. He's in the car right now. I told him to wait for me. Whoa, 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 whoa. So wait, did your guy's been waiting out here the whole time in the hot sun? Yeah, I just told him to wait for him, and he kind of just does whatever I say. It's pretty great. Why'd you tell him to do it with the windows up? I know the engines. Are That's just even cruel. I didn't. I didn't. I just didn't tell him to do it with the windows down. He's not, you know, the See, smartest. It's but... like hundred degrees outside. Now I'm assuming that he has engaged you physically. Well, I mean, of course we've engaged physically. Look at that body. It is stupid. Of course we've engaged over and over physically, but that doesn't mean that he's pulling some sort of a system. Hey guys. Hey. Hey Dee. I, I didn't see you there. Are you almost done? Yeah, yeah. I just I got caught up in a story, but I'll be done pretty soon. Oh, oh, oh okay. What, do you want me to come in? No, no, I don't. No, you just you just stay where you are, and you know what? I'll text you when I'm wrapping up, and then you can crank the AC, cool the car off for me. Sure thing. Okay. See you, fellas. Okay. Okay. See you, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
D, you're getting played. You're no, getting played he's big not time. Doing big time. Anything. He's just. I told him to. Say And then it does also have a great sunny structure, and then it just sort of ends. Like it, do, it kind of gets up to a point, and then, well, you, you'll see this. It just sort of. No, no, I, I recall. I, I think there might have been a couple lines past it that we just cut. We, we, mm -hmm. we, we, we leave it on, um, on uh, Gladys. 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 Like, yeah. Am I gonna get a ride home? Yeah, so yeah, sometimes yeah. we, you know, we have those endings, and they just. They yeah. feel wooden or they feel like super scripty. And so it's just better yeah. to find a. It was super funny moment. the ending on Gladys. It's so dark. Mae Laborde, 100 so years old when she shot this episode. No, she's so Wow, sweet. she was 100? 100 when wow. she shot this. What's her name? Oh, I'm forgetting her May name. Laborde. May. May. Yeah. I think the best version of finding an ending that wasn't in the script was um, it's seasons later, but it's a water park episode where it ends with. Max sitting Mac on that putting his butt on the on the thing. We had a whole thing of us going back to the car and re oh yes and, and recapping a whole conversation about yeah like us. what went wrong and it just it just felt clunky when we got in the editing room and then just ending it on Rob. He even kind of like looks in the camera a little he, bit. Yeah, he, yeah. he basically looks right into the camera. Yeah, and actually, like, perfect. There's our ending. <laughs> one of my favorite moments is this: is the first time we see Dennis's sort of flashback as Dennis is describing his system, and for, and the first time we see you, yeah, yeah. and uh, and you get this sort of like flashback feeling to it, where they're mouthing the words that they're saying, uh -huh. but you're narrating it, yeah. and then you just look straight into the lens, mm -hmm. which I think is really, really yeah. funny and kind of sets the tone for how like creepy this uh -huh. is what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. I demonstrated my value to her by filling a prescription. I told her, it's for my grandmother. She's quite ill. Thus demonstrating my value as a loving grandson and an all-around great guy. I don't know about what the time frame was for when you started dating, but do you... I was... We were talking about the other day, the game, the thing this this uh, episode is based on. Yeah. Do you remember ever feeling like you were the victim of, like, the game being done on you? Like, the negging or any of that sort of... Do you remember that? That so, yeah. were you no. dating then? You said you were in a five-year relationship before yeah. you met Glenn. So yeah. I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah she might have so missed much. the game window. Oh, you know? man, it was weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, even you, know. So you were went. saying you you experienced someone trying to the game you? Oh yeah, I I experienced the peacocking. I started seeing that in because this that was like in the book came out in two thousand five and two thousand six to two thousand nine. I was in New York, just like dating oh, and just in my early 20s and, right. and just yeah what so. was the peacocking like what like just wearing weird things like you talked about your buddy it, like they talked about um having yeah, a friend the, the, tie, and Roselle, his head. the mm -hmm. tie on his head wearing strange things like coming in with like a bird on the shoulder or something <laughs> like that but also just coming up and having pickup lines that are really random like how often do you wash your towel your bath towel or like just these weird things. It's all things about that throwing people off balance, exactly. right? Exactly. Like becoming yeah. becoming a, a person of interest by mm -hmm. peacocking. Yeah. And then having interactions with people where you, you throw them off balance and, like, and they have they can't they don't have time to recalibrate before yeah. you've you've like you, you tell pounce, a woman, pounce. Oh, I, I really love those shoes you're wearing. I think I saw another woman wearing them. And so you're, you're kind all, of complimenting her, but yeah. also being like, you're basic at the same <laughs> time. You're uh, also a basic like bitch, that. so. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you see, yeah. Um, yeah. you guys saw Licorice Pizza, right? Like uh, the character Bradley Cooper's playing is um, a famous guy who was like a hairdresser turned movie producer who dated uh, Barbara Streisand. And like, anyway, he had a pickup line that uh, he, you know, Paul Thomas Anderson had written the script and he'd asked him, hey, can I, you know, represent you in this film? Is this okay? And he was like, you know, I wouldn't be yelling at uh, the the girl from Hyam. I would be trying to sleep with her. He's like, oh, that's much better. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, can you get my pickup line in the movie? He's like, what's your pickup line? And he's like, I would just ask girls if they like peanut butter sandwiches. And they would think that was a random question and they would laugh at it and then it would kick off a conversation. More like an icebreaker. That's I pretty feel like. good. Yeah. I like that. It's so neutral yeah, you like peanut butter sandwich? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's, it's, not, that's, it's, it's tame. Not, it's got nothing to do with like it's hooking not, up with them. Yeah. Yeah, it's not hmm. gross. Or like, how often do you wash your towels? It's creepy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like, like you that's really my creepy. Routine, that's creepy. Is a little yeah. bit personal. Right. Yeah, but that is yeah. that's you like peanut butter sandwiches is just perfectly normal yeah. to ask someone. Did you guys totally. ever have pickup lines? The What's two that? of you, did you ever have pickup lines? What do you use? think? <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. No. Charlie was just waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> for her to make it very clear that she wanted him to approach him to start a conversation. And, yeah. Uh, and that was, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, like, I definitely would just, 
I use my sense of humor, right? Like sure, uh, if yeah. we're hanging out, meet someone, start joking around the way I'm always joking around. And if they didn't like my jokes or understand what I was talking about, adios, you know? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty so good. That's pretty clear indication this ain't gonna work. <laughs> Attention, New York City. Hello, New York City. Talking Hello. to you. Hello. Hello. Are you there? We have another exciting announcement. <laughs> what is it? The Always Sunny Podcast is coming to you live for not one, but two nights at where? Two? Radio City Music Hall. That's right, Radio City Music Hall. Here's the thing. Our October 12th show, it's sold out. You can't go, you bitches. Can't go that <laughs> you, you waited too long. Uh, whatever 60 seconds it was in which it sold out. And and, and now you n- need us to do a second night. But guess what? We are doing a second All night. All right, we'll do a second it night. It turns out it. New York is a very big city yes. and there are lots of people who'd like mm-hmm. to come. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do that second night on, on Friday, October 13th. Pre-sale begins this Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the code SUNNY before the general on-sale Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern time because you live in the East. We also have a live show at TD Pavilion at The Man in Philadelphia on Saturday, September 23rd. So if you can't get a New York City ticket, maybe you get on a train, you go see it in Philly. That's right, but don't wait. Don't wait. Okay, tickets and all info at thealwayssunnypod.com. I love in this episode, like, uh, Max swimming in in your wake and then Frank swimming in his yes. wake and how Frank says that one of the things he wants to do is move up a rank. So he wants seconds oh, yeah, he's from now. He's trying ranks. to rise yeah. to get seconds and go in front of Mac, uh, who's doing the bookworm routine with the with I, the reading glasses outdoors at the fair, which I thought was really a funny choice <laughs> oh, to be like, funny. oh, smart people wear these, and but they're not recognizing that they're for reading. And uh, yeah, and it's very flipping sweet. the Magnum and Monster in the end where he says, I dropped my... Um, bo- drop I my couldn't con- get it. My monster condom from, from a magnum. 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 <laughs> Which wasn't an accident. I think we scripted it like that. I can't remember if it, or it was I either that I or I think he screwed it up in the rehearsal or something. Or, so there was something really? where, yeah, I think it was one of those like Danny accidents that we were like, yes, that. Yeah, that one. In right. the same that way one. that, you know, that one, the, the guy in $100 Baby said, uh, you know, st- oh, yeah, don't yeah. get your panties in an, in an uproar. uproar. <laughs> like, it was a mistake. <laughs> Perfect. And we were like, that yeah. is so Amazing. much funnier than don't get your panties in a wad. Yeah. <laughs> well, also in this episode, sorry, uh, the uh, Charlie, you know, tries to Dennis the waitress, and there's a great Charlie line that I love. I'm a plumber. You're a fair worker. We go well together. Let's go well like, together. The, the, yeah, go well they together. go well. Oh. Let's go well together. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think <laughs> we that laughed was, at that. I, I, I feel like that was probably an improvised line. I, I yes. feel like that was one of those I, things where you guys are just playing on the day. I remember Another we had a I, real speed pitch thing there. Oh yeah. And I remember like trying to like throw seeing how fast and like hurting my shoulder already back then oh and also just being bummed out at like how slow it was like i was like oh, i have no i never had a strong arm but just be like oh man i'm like maxing out at like mid 50s it's terrible i really enjoy that sequence too because charlie is like what what is this and she just has to read o- yeah. off the board like the very big letters that say speed, speed yeah it's just a giant and she says, it's he's so like what do i win you. she's like i think that was her improv yeah, yeah. Yes, that was very speed. funny pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, was it in the script or improvised? I, another moment I love is Dennis coming up with how he's going to fix the plan with that classical music that's oh, playing. Yeah. Okay, clearly none of you have any idea how to run my system. God damn, all right, I'm going to get everybody what they want, including myself. Let me just think for a second. Let me, let me just work something out here and then... Well. What's he doing? Just shut up and let him work. We're going to the fair. Like a that was not a script. Gesture. That was an editing room discovery. I think that was something. I think that was an on the day thing. I I think I just I thought like, wouldn't it be funny to like you know, have some sort of like orchestra playing in my head where I'm literally orchestrating a plan 
as an orchestra is playing. I, I don't know. I but think then you go through all of today. that and then you just say, we're going to the fair. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Which has already uh-huh. been put well, yeah, forward. Yeah, as yeah. Right. Play. Do we play do. it dry or do we do music and cut it out? Uh, no, we put, we put music. music in. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's great. Did you have that in your mind when you were doing it? That I don't Because dun, it's dun, dun, matches yeah. pretty well, like what you were doing to that song. So I don't I know if don't they had to find I, a song to the match or if you had Yeah, I don't think I did. I think it just worked out somehow. That's funny. Yeah, which is weird. You'd be surprised like how often things fit you put it in just sometimes right it fits so good you're like oh perfect right right right. but yeah, yeah. but it does end perfectly on that dun, 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 dun. and i go like that well that <laughs> like was it, an editing it's, thing. it's crazy yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i don't know if maybe maybe we, we just messed with the timing yeah, yeah for probably sure, but. um how was it to act with one another have you done had you done that before or have you done it since uh in all in all those scenes you had together uh I don't, I don't think we have done it before or since. I mean, no. we used to work on auditions with each other. Yeah, but, but that's different. No projects that we've worked on together. No. You've produced things that Glenn's been a part of, but like uh, uh Yeah. Yeah, I just recently. Yeah, yeah, recently. yeah that's correct. The the Thief Collector, which yes. is a great, great uh movie. documentary that she Thank produced. You. And Glenn uh, is in some of the reenactments. Yeah, that he are stars in our reenactments with yes. a very fantastic mustache. Yes. They're very uh-huh. kind of quirky, stylized reenactments. Um that was just released last Friday. Yes, well, yeah. just, just see quick. it on I, all I, I you anywhere you can it rent or buy DVDs and uh, various places. Yes, I Amazon, have, um, iTunes, Google yeah. Play. Um, Let's, can we talk a little bit about the transition that you made from being an actor to being a producer and yeah. like how that happened and what kind of stuff you're working on right now? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I I, it was, I was always kind of performing. I, I grew up dancing, you know, since I was three years old. And that transitioned in my early 20s when I moved to New York. I was a Nick City dancer for a short time. And then I got into modeling from that. And then I did that for a while. And then I started doing commercials. And I'm like, ooh, acting's fun. And so I transitioned into acting. And we like, talked about a commercial you did with Tom Brady. Is that right? I did, did do a commercial with Tom Brady. I think Brady. we talked about it on the podcast. I'm not sure oh. if it ever made it in, but you, I did. And you can find that uh, on YouTube, I think. It's yeah. out there. Really? It was a Visa mm-hmm. commercial with Tom Brady. Yeah. We'll put it right here. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can watch it. Watch well, right here. Yeah. Tom, we're figurative metaphors. What? We represent the five layers of Visa security that surround you in a pocket of protection. Hi there. Yeah, so it's, you know, I was evolving and kind of always trying to find the thing that was my thing, you know, and I enjoyed every piece of that journey. But even as an actor, like, I enjoyed it when I was doing it. But anyone that acts knows that it's a very, or can be a very difficult journey, you know, it's like a lot of waiting. I felt like I was waiting for something because. It's like you work and then the job's over. And then you're auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. Oh, it's between you and one other girl. Oh, you didn't get it. It's like this roller coaster. I think you have I no tested. no control over your fate. Yeah. Just I remember hearing you talk about this once. How many times you tested like before Sunny? Oh, my God. I yeah. tested, I remember, seven times in one year for the leads oh. and pilots and didn't get any of them. And it was just like so rough, you yeah. know? And although I enjoyed it, I'm like, I just feel like I have more to give. And I'm just like sitting here. Like, wh- I need to put this energy into something. And so... We, Glenn and I enjoyed documentaries, and we had reached out to a director of a doc that we saw that we really liked. And I said, look, and I just started putting it out there. I'm like, if you need help with anything, like this is an issue I really care about, you know, let me know. And I started doing work with nonprofit groups and environmental groups. And um, and that director who we reached out to, she was doing this um, – these celebrity PSAs for Prop 37, which was to get GMOs labeled. This was back in 2012. And she calls me out of the blue and she goes, hey, you know, I'm doing these PSAs and I was wondering, you know, I know you haven't produced before, but I was wondering if you wanted to produce them for me. And I think at the time she was asking because I had a lot of connections with actors that, you you know, like Mm -hmm. it would be easy to kind of like cast and get people in. And I was like, oh, okay, I haven't done this before, but sure. And through that process, I was like, oh, like, this is my thing. <laughs> like, I just enjoyed it so much. Like, my natural skill set is that of a producer. And so it doesn't feel like work to me. And then couple it with an issue that I cared about. It was like, this is amazing. And so my now producing partner, Josh, um, he was also producing that those PSAs with me. And he had started another project, which is called GMO OMG, which was a full feature doc about GMOs. And he's like, look, it's just me and my best friend who is the director, and we've shot it, but we haven't edited it. We need some new blood. Like, I know you're new, but I can tell, like, you're great at this. Would you want to come on and help finish this movie? And I was like, yes. And so it just kind of 
took off from there. And then Josh and I had such a good experience on that movie that we decided to start our company, Roots Productions, and it's just been growing from there. It's amazing so. when you have that moment, right? The spark where you're like, oh, this fits. This is yeah. right. You mm-hmm. know, you don't feel like you're pushing a boulder up a hill. Yeah. And I saw it. It was really interesting to see happen, yeah. too. Because I could see that she was searching for something like this. That is like, I have, like she would say, like, I feel like I have so much more to give. Mm-hmm. Right, um, so much more to offer the world, um, and just couldn't quite figure out what that was. And it wasn't until yeah. she got involved in GMO OMG that, like, I really saw like the. Sp- I saw you light up, yeah, and I could see. I was like, oh, okay, this is yeah. And I think because I'd always been in like the performing arts, like I, I guess I never even considered it really. But then once I got into that role, I was like, oh no, this is it, you know. And all the experience I have from being a performer helps me so much because I've been on sets. I've been, you know, like I feel very comfortable in that setting. I've seen how producers work, how they interact with talent, how they, you Mm -hmm. know, like, so it, it was amazing how it just kind of like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. So after, after GMO OMG, you guys produced The Devil We Know. Yeah. We went on to do The Devil We Know. Um, and then The Thief Collector was next. The Thief Thief Collector was the first doc we did that was not issue based. It's just a fun, quirky art heist Mm -hmm. film. Also about like a very interesting couple. A very interesting couple. Yeah. So it's yeah. like well, it became about that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it started yeah. out as this. You know, basically a de Kooning painting was cut out of the frame in 1985 at this tiny um, museum in Arizona, and they had no video like security cameras or anything, so it kind of disappeared into the desert. And then cut to 32 years later, this 85 year old woman passes away. Her husband had died a few years earlier. Um, a small town in New Mexico, like 300 people, and they find this painting now worth $160 million hanging behind their bedroom door. Crazy. Um, just to do something like that and then to never tell anybody about it. Well, that's they were what just, was they so... Were sco- they, were, they were school teachers. Well, it's the, fascinating. That, that's what the whole documentary is, it's, about, is yeah. about. It's about, it's did exploring, they do it? Did they know yeah. what it was? Did yeah. they... You because know. they were deceased. So, like, there isn't full, full proof that they did it. Did they not do it? Did they purchase it? Did, you know, all these things. Uh-huh. There's a lot of evidence in the film, as you'll see, that... Well, you know, that points, it, to, it points to them yeah. actually mm-hmm. doing it themselves. But, but then that's the mystery why it's so becomes like, how, how did two school teachers become like art thieves? Art yeah, like, and, how and, that why? Why? Like, yeah. like, and why? They don't sell it, they don't like profit off it. No. So it's purely also, the Russian like how well it yeah. or knowing, or maybe the sense of like having some sort of power and like a yeah. powerless life. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting. And how yeah. the people in their lives had, would never have guessed in a million years that they would could yeah. be capable of something like this. Like it's a, it's yeah. a fascinating, Couples fascinating Couples that doc. commit crimes together are just interesting because okay. like, it's, I always think it's so hard to meet somebody that jives with you on so many different things. <laughs> yeah. But like imagine if you found somebody that was like, no, I lit- I also want to kill people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what are you working on now? Or are there yeah. projects you, that you're working on that you can talk about? Yeah, there's a handful I can't talk about yet, but um. I guess the next one, the one we're working on now, two things we're in production on. One is a four-part doc series for MGM Plus about the serial killer Ed Gein. Oh, interesting. It's not, he it's, used it's outside of my... to make like lamp well, shades and stuff That's like why that. it's a little yeah. ironic that the wife of Dennis <laughs> would be <laughs> yeah. producing yeah. a doc totally. about the guy who makes yeah. skin like, suits I, I yeah. made and jokes, skin luggage. Like I've made yeah. so many jokes, so many that, jokes. Were, that were all based on my knowledge uh-huh. of Ed Gein, uh-huh. only because I remember seeing a movie And by the way, a, kind about, of fucked up just to call him serial killer, like serial killer slash designer, yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We don't yes. offend yes. him. Yes. Plus, slash DJ, probably. Slash, slash, DJ. <laughs> slash, yeah. slash model. Um, but, but I'd seen a movie model. about Ed Gein years ago, and I was just so, I was like, oh my, this is the most fucked up yeah. shit I've ever. And he and like, and, I, and the thing that really stuck with me was the fact that he would take people's skin and like turn it into like lampshades. Yeah. And you know, yeah. and so and so that became a source of comedy for <laughs> yeah. me for like my character. Somehow. Like he's like, saying, <laughs> do you think that if somebody made a mask of my face, <laughs> that totally, you would wear all, it? all that you stuff, would... all those jokes, and then in the in the in the, the the podcast thing that we did, where you know I, I talk about like turning someone's into a lampshade, or right, and then in the the episode where I'm talking to Dee about oh, like yeah, turning her skin into into a luggage collection. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so it's very ironic because it's really not the subject matter is not in our wheelhouse. It's we've never done true crime or anything, but there's a really unique aspect to the show that 
it hasn't been announced that I'm not allowed to talk about, but stay tuned because yeah, it's something that's... Yeah, there's some organic lampshades. There's, no, a, <laughs> there's no, something no that's going to make it uh, different than any other show or movie you've seen about yeah. Ed Gein. Well, first of all, most people don't... Most people don't even know that much about Ed Gein. There have been so many things about other serial killers, but he yeah. was like... <laughs> The this psychology was... behind what he did is really interesting. Yeah, like he's the... not a charismatic Ted Bundy type. He was mm-hmm. like a very simple farmer, but he had a very complicated relationship with his mother, and so the they skin suit do. stuff is like <laughs> yeah. trying to recreate. They think she was, he was maybe trying to recreate his mother. Like it's very Jesus. dark. Well, what, what, what a lot of for for those people who don't know much about Ed Gein, uh, Leatherface mm-hmm. is based on Ed Gein. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, Psycho, Psycho mm-hmm. that character in Psycho mm-hmm. is based on Ed Gein. Silence of the Lambs. Silence of yeah, Hannibal Lecter is Put based on Ed Gein. Like so many yeah, sort of, of those yeah. like horrible characters. Yeah, we're based off are of based him. on Ed Gein, and yet people don't know that much about Ed Gein. And this this talk has like, as she said, like an element to it that is. It's going to be surprising. I'm not allowed to yeah, say it yet, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Ooh, all right. New, yeah. new discoveries. Yeah. New discoveries. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that days. one that will be out in September, I believe. We were thinking Halloween, but I'm thinking it's going to come out after Labor Day. So we'll see. Um, and then, yeah, we're in production of another feature doc about domestic workers um, and their fight for protections under federal labor laws and dignity. Um, you know. Uh, there, we like to say that, not we, I should say, Ai Jin Poo from the National Domestic Workers Alliance coined this phrase, which is so true that domestic workers make all other work possible. You know, women like me would not be able to be in the workforce if it weren't for domestic workers, for our nannies and, you know, he- home health care aides that take care of our elderly and our disabled. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about um, that group of mostly women, not all women, um, mostly women of color, immigrants, so that's yeah. a really important story that I'm excited to be working on. Yeah. Um, and then we have a handful of other things in development. Um, we've kind of organically gotten into scripted because I'd be looking for stories for docs and kind of read things that are like, this would be an amazing movie. So Glenn and I are actually, speaking of working together, we're producing a scripted movie together. Mm-hmm. Great. I don't think we should and talk about And this is how that. those things seem to find their way around. Like, you say you've retired from acting, but I wouldn't be surprised if it found its way all the way around until you make a scripted thing that you're like, you know what? I want to be in this. Yeah. And then you never there know. you're acting again. You never I know. Just, I, I, don't, I mean, maybe. Maybe. It's but not I mean, my goal. It came, up, yeah. it came up even when we were working on The Thief Collector of like, should we be in this together? Like, do you want to play? How right. We were ca- in casting the woman, you know, and I was trying to get different actresses and... Well, I did say, I'm like, if we can't get who we want, I will do this. You know, everyone's like, just do it. And I was like, I will. But I didn't really want to. Yeah, I could tell that was the thing yeah. that was yeah. interesting to me. I, I'm kind of done with it. I mean, if someone had something that was just right or was like a funny yeah. cameo or like if they asked me to like for Kaylee to come back for an episode, yeah. like, yes, I would do that. But like, Which I'm I would not. Like to oh, do, that's actually. interesting. Yeah. But I'm not Kaylee looking. <laughs> I'm not looking for that. So I, I enjoyed. You have separated entirely. I've separated from, entirely. Uh, from yeah, mm-hmm. I really that's, have. That's fine. Um, yeah, but it's fun. It just makes it want you so much more yeah yes. you know that's exactly. been proven yeah <laughs> <laughs> and your marriage it's gonna last or where are we oh, with wow. that? No well are, the kids are, are driving you nuts and and uh, there's there's no telling there's no telling. there's no telling i mean there's all kinds of things that can you know ruin a marriage mm-hmm. but for now <laughs> you're bonding over the skin lamps um okay <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, I think we did it. Yeah, this we is, did do it. Joe, that yeah. was all that, that it was. The, what do you think of being on the podcast? Did you I enjoy loved it. it? Okay, I great. did enjoy right. it. Time to, to separate, separate entirely. <laughs> <laughs>